Hi, this is Dan. I hope you're doing well today. Here are some really great funk bass techniques. First, I'm going to teach you the bass line. We got a G, third fret of the E string. There's one of the techniques there, it's the hammer on. So pluck the F on the third fret of the D string and hammer down using a curled and rigid third or fourth finger up to you. And you want the hammered down sound to be as loud as the plucked F. So we've got a short B flat and then we're jumping up to the G on the 12th fret. I mean, there's an extra technique there, which I wasn't going to cover, but it's a hand shift. You've got to get from the third fret all the way up to the 12th fret. And in funk, a lot of bass lines are very articulate. They use the full register of the bass. So you've got to be quick to get there. So, And that is a classic bass technique. It's called the shake. Now this is from my funk bass course. And this is a little section on Mark Adams, who's the bass player from Slave. Just a relatively unknown player who's just one of the most amazing bass players and he used these articulations all the time, especially this one. So what we're doing is we're... I mean, you can play this with the first or the second finger. Up to you. But what we're doing is we're plucking an F on the 10th fret of the G string. And just, it's really a slide up one fret and then back and then down one fret really quickly. I've heard people call this different things, doesn't matter what you call it. Whatever this is, I'm calling it a shake. Mm -hmm. Just sounds cool. Mm -hmm. I suppose you can alter the the speed. You can alter how far you go up and down. Mm -hmm. You hear this a lot. That's the shake. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. The next bit's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now one of the techniques I'm covering is finger style. Mm -hmm. And that's connected to note length. Mm -hmm. That B flat there is being played very short. You can do that either by plucking and then catching the string with the other finger, or by just releasing pressure off the notes with your fretting hand, which is kind of what I'm doing. There's another hand shift, very quick one, from B flat down an octave to the first fret A string. Here, let's move on to some other things. What I was doing in the intro, which you can do as well over the drums, which I'll put a link to, is to improvise. And we can use some of these techniques to do this. So uh, this is in the key of G, kind of G Dorian. Every single one of those notes works, but I was actually being even more simple than that. I was going G minor pentatonic. So. That is an essential funk bass technique. It's the ghost note. L many of these techniques can be used in other styles, by the way. But a ghost note is where instead of fretting, you have a finger or combination, more likely, of fingers that just touch the string without fretting and you get the dead percussive sound. You've got to be a little careful not to accidentally catch a harmonic. So that's why I'll often use more than one finger. So let's, uh, this is the pattern that I'm just going to spend a little bit of the rest of the lesson just making some stuff up. Okay, let's do that. I'm going B flat C, fret three to five of the G string with a hammer on first, followed immediately by a ghost note. Now, there's a bit of fast plucking. Here's this finger style we need to get used to, and especially 16th notes. We're going this fast. Sixteenths are chuk, 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 for every beat. So you have to be comfortable plucking at that speed, okay? So after I do the hammer on, I'm just releasing pressure. I've got my first, second and third fingers deadening that string. So now when I pluck, 
If I didn't have the first and the second fingers pressing down on that string, there's my hammer on. Put my second finger down, still a bit of a harmonic. Three fingers for me completely deadens it. Now you might have your own way of doing this. You know, you can flatten your hand out across the, all the strings. Everything's muted. We got this. I'm returning to the B flat, so we've got four notes, including that ghost note. Since um, the D and the A strings have notes on the third and fifth frets, you can do the same pattern just going down. So ghost notes, you have to get those in. It just makes the bass sound like a percussive instrument. It really emphasizes the rhythm part of it. Next, we have raking. Raking is just where you get one finger and it's when you pluck from a high-pitched string to a low-pitched string. So you're going in this direction. I'm just laying my hands over here, just my hand over here, just to do the ghost note sound. And plucking through all the strings, G, D, A, and then E. You can use the index or middle, little combination. I can't get that fast with alternate plucking. So that's where this comes in. So let's just make something up here. Okay, so I'm going B flat, F, D. Third fret of the D, of the G and the, then the D string. And then I'm playing the D on the fifth fret of the, of the A string. Now there are some other techniques coming in here as well. I'll show you. It's really slow. So I'm playing the B flat on the first crease of my finger, not the fingertip. And this time I'm doing raking in conjunction with something you see a lot, which is rolling. So as I pluck onto the D string, I just roll the finger. So I'm now on the fingertip on the F on the third fret of the D string. So as that's happening, I'm getting my third finger in position. You must always have your finger one step in the future. And that's playing the, the D on the fifth fret of the A string. All the time, I've been plucking with one finger. Now there's that rolling thing in reverse. I've got the D on the fingertip of the third finger. And instead of moving, it's gonna be too quick. I just flatten out the finger and roll down sort of onto that first crease, raking all the way and then plucking the D string. Now there, I'm using my little finger to fret those two notes. You could even use your third and then use your fourth. Make sure that you've got everything muted so you don't get any extraneous noises. That's very important, muting. I was originally gonna call this video five essential funk bass techniques, but I've gone through more than five even already, but mainly we have finger style. And making sure that you're able to control the note length. We have raking, we have ghost notes, and we've got the shake, which you can do on any note. Don't forget pull-offs, opposite of hammer-on. So you pluck, say, fret five, the C on the G string. You must have a note already fretted. So in this case, B flat, I'm plucking, and now I'm flicking the string down towards the floor, getting a pull-off. Make sure you, you don't come off the string. This finger's gotta be nice and secure, the first. Pull-off goes from a high pitch to a low pitch. Hammer-on goes from a low pitch to a high pitch note. There's a hammer-on. Pull-off. There's one hammer-on followed by a pull-off really quick. That's technically called a trill. A little bit like a shake, but not quite. There I'm just improvising using a combination of these techniques. I'm not really thinking about it. I am just staying in this one great shape. Let's move up a bit. I use vibrato at the end. There's just more articulations here. I also did a slide. These aren't just funk techniques. You can use this in any style, but I'm using this in a funk context. That's G Dorian. 
The root, the minor third or flat third, that major sixth, that just sounds so good. So use these choice notes in conjunction with great techniques. You can come up with all kinds of things. Let's do a couple more and I'll break them down. There's G minor pentatonic, that goes hand in hand with this scale. So G, two Gs. Did a little ghost note before doing a hammer on from fret 10 to 12 on the D string. And again, once more, making sure that I've got more than one finger on um, doing the ghost notes so that I don't get any slight harmonic. Same thing on the 10, 12 on the G string. Okay, what about this? I did exactly the same ghost note hammer on thing, but this time between the major sixth and the flat seven, that's frets nine to 10 on the G string. So G, 10th fret A string. Slide, pluck, I'm going fret 10, sorry. 8, 10, 12 on the D string. So pluck, slide, and again. That's going up and then down. Little hammer on from fret 12, 10 to 12 on the G. Then I'm doing a pull off that's a Flat five makes it a blues scale. Really great sound that. So I'm going pull off from fret 11 to 10 on the D string. Okay, making sure that flick is as loud as the pluck. And then after that, immediately doing a slide down. So this first finger is always in contact with the fretboard, otherwise the slide will, the note will stop. There's that rake. Finger style. Sixteenth notes. Digga 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 digga. Those are those are sixteenth note triplets. I'm not really gonna explain those too much because it's going a bit too crazy. But just to just to be aware of your rhythms and you need to know all your rhythms up to 16th notes and then 16th note triplets if you really want to go a bit crazy. Now I do cover all of this stuff and the you know the the scales that you're going to cover and 40 really cool bass lines in that funk bass course if you're interested in it I'll put a link below. But yeah, those are your sort of main funk bass techniques and a couple of ways that you can just come up with your own lines. If you know the notes that sort of fit and work G minor pentatonic, G Dorian, and you know some of these techniques. Spend some time getting them under your fingers. It's going to take a while, of course. And then instantly try to make up your own sort of lines using the notes and the cool techniques. Don't use a drum beat until you feel comfortable. Otherwise, you'll just get a bit lost. So start really slow. I know I've been demonstrating things quickly here, but you can do it slowly. Build up slowly and you'll have this down in no time. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.